state your name, followed by the pound sign. The end of the session, as well as, uh, uh, you know, you, if you have any burning questions, you can actually uh, uh, give it uh, or type it in your chat window to Informatica support. Okay? So, hope everyone can see my screen. I'm going to put everyone on mute, apart from me. Your line has been muted. Your line has been unmuted. Hello. Can you hear me fine now? Yes, I can hear you. Okay, so for some reason, if I uh, mute everyone, it is muting me as well. Okay. <laughs> anyway, so. Okay, so let me uh, let me go ahead. I mean, please mute yourself so that uh, you know if you're if you're having a side conversation, it's not audible for others. Okay. okay. So uh, good morning. I am Vishwa Belur. I am the product manager for Informatica Business Glossary, and uh, I'm going to take you through the overview of uh, uh, Informatica Business Glossary, the features, and also some of the use cases uh, that. Uh, that business glossary addresses in today's meeting. Okay, some housekeeping uh, tips before we start. Uh, mute your phone during the presentation. Uh, we will open up the table for Q&A towards the end of the session for about 15 minutes. And uh, feel free to post your questions over chat as well if you have uh, any burning questions that we can take it up later. And this session will be recorded, and you will get an email uh, about the recording after the session is complete. And you can also check our YouTube channel for the previous recordings. And uh, at the, after the session, you will be sent a survey link. Uh, we, we would uh, encourage you to share your feedback so that, uh, you know, we can improve as we go along. Okay, so of the uh, tentative list of uh, upcoming support webinars, uh, we have uh, Project Springbok to be presented in January 2015, and then DQ Profiling and Scorecards in February, and Push on Optimization and Performance and uh, uh, Performance Increasing Techniques in uh, March 2015. Okay. Here is the agenda that I have for today's session. Uh, let's look at the business glossary use cases and market scenario and, and problems addressed by uh, business glossary. Then hello. I'll take you through hello. the Informatica. Hello. Hello. hello, this is Kalyan from Tech Mahindra. I'm not able to join in WebEx uh, with this meeting number. Okay, uh, have you got the 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 uh, WebEx details along with uh, the meeting invite? Correct. Okay. Uh, that whatever meeting number 6434836624, I'm not able to join with that. Okay, uh, Patabi or someone on the line, uh, could you help uh, the participant please with the details? Okay. Yeah, let's let's move on. So hopefully someone will help you. Uh, we we just have one hour for today, so I, I will move along. And if you uh, if you uh, if you are not able to join, you can you can watch the WebEx recording as well. That's uh, you can probably log okay. in. Okay. Okay. Uh, I'll take you through uh, Informatica strategy and vision for data governance, uh, which is called as holistic data stewardship. And post that, I will give you an overview of uh, Informatica Business Glossary and its features. And I'll demonstrate uh, the, the capabilities of the solution that we have in place. And finally, I'll also share some of the best practices and, and the resources that you can uh, look at for getting no, to know more information about Business Glossary. 
Okay. <clears throat> Historically, uh, metadata management has focused on collecting and uh, managing metadata to enhance developer productivity, uh, predominantly managed by IT and focused uh, towards technical users, and it focused on capabilities like loading metadata from a variety of sources, providing a catalog of objects in the resources, it provided uh, capability to decorate technical metadata with uh, business concepts to provide business uh, uh, business context to the users and also uh, provide lineage and impact summary information for technical object so that the users know which other objects get impact impacted by the changes in in this object so it focused more on collecting and managing metadata and to enhance developer productivity so that uh, developers and uh, and also the technical users can uh, get to know about information that is available in the in the sources and also uh, get to know about the lineage and impact summary and those kind of things okay however uh, we are seeing a shift uh, in the in the data governance on from traditional IT driven to uh, in the tra traditional IT driven metadata management according to Forrester data governance market is undergoing a shift where data governance is becoming business led initiative and more and more business users are part of the evaluation process so you see some of the the comments that is mentioned here that uh, more and more organizations are looking towards data governance as a strategic enterprise competence as they adopt a data driven culture and also more and more business users are part of the data governance evaluation process so that uh, you know it, it is becoming more and more uh, business driven okay so this is uh, what Forrest said in the data governance tools way in 2002 to 2014 Some use cases and examples of uh, data governance and, and business philosophy. Right? Uh, regulatory compliance is one of the major factors driving uh, of the, the uh, business philosophy and data governance. Financial institutions need to be compliant with regulations, especially Basel III, uh, SOX, BCBS 239, etc., and ensure uh, consistent definition of business concepts. Uh, uh, where uh, you have offices in many regions and you need to uh, build uh, you know a glossary so that uh, people understand the concept in multiple languages across multiple uh, countries or continents and also that there is uh, there are some organizations which would like to align with the industry wide consortium for comprehensive standards definition so that they can adopt uh, standards that are defined uh, in their particular industry segments So what does it mean to data governance solutions that are offered by various vendors? So data governance solutions must cater to business users because business users are driving uh, the, the adoption of the solution as well as uh, the people who use uh, most of these. And hence, it needs to be easy to use uh, and, and visualizations uh, should be provided for data stewardship so that business users can feel at ease using the tools and it should provide workflow capabilities for content approvals, which is very, very important in the in the manner that uh, if you have if you have created a content, it needs to go through various levels of approval uh, before it gets uh, publicized and available for general consumption. And we need to provide a role-based access for the content so that you can uh, uh, you know limit the the usage or the content access to certain set of people. Uh, for example, who can create, uh, who can who can edit the content, who can you know approve the content, etc. So you need to provide some role-based access, and uh, it needs to provide the ability to document business policies for enforcing the organization-wide policies. So I'm going to talk through some of the business policy uh, concepts in in the coming slides on how policy is going to help uh, uh, organizations to enforce. Uh, uh, 
organization wide policies yeah excuse me was that a question me? yes i have a quick yeah. question will you go over how to use these fields yes okay yeah i'm going i'm going to dem demonstrate the solution you know in a few minutes okay, okay. thank you okay yeah yeah and also emphasize on business outcomes uh, with focus on operation and control and to enforce governance principles across the organization and it, it should integrate well with other solutions uh, for example uh, other uh, data integration data quality master data management and uh, you know other information life cycle management tools for a seamless experience when the users move across from one tool to the other so these are the, these are the implications for data governance solutions from uh, uh the changing market needs so what is informatica data governance uh, stewardship concept is right so we have uh, two uh layers defined one is the holistic data governance which talks about uh, decision making framework and cross functional organization uh, charter to create data management policies Uh, processes and also standards to optimize return on data whereas we have data stewardship which is called the holistic data stewardship which addresses the frontline uh, roles and responsibilities to ensure compliance with the defined data governance guidelines to uh, deliver trusted and secure data so the important point here is that uh, there is a need to balance these two so that we can achieve the best results okay so the key to success is to enable business and it having an effective collaboration throughout the data management life cycle enabling an effective please people on the, who are not speaking go on mute uh, so that uh, we don't hear echo as well as uh, your own conversations thank you thank you so we need to enable effective collaboration among the business facing data stewards who know what the business needs from its data and i tell the first and architects and architects who manage this data you have to mute the phones i can't hear other people please mute your phones please mute your lines so that you know others can hear the conversations all is in my line as well so that's the reason why i'm not able to mute okay it get better thank you okay great okay uh so we were talking about holistic data stewardship uh typically one starts with discovery understanding the current state of data profiling it for quality or other problems and discovering sensitive data and data data relationships this is very difficult to understand one starting point where do they uh, where do they have to start their whole process right once they discover the data uh, you can define the ideal state this also includes a business glossary for defining common vocabulary for how to talk about the data for example uh, a, a definition of a customer across the organization can vary uh, depending on the business unit that you are speaking to so there needs to be uh, a definition of customer uh, across the enterprise define also includes uh, defining business semantics such as classifications and relationships between the the various data elements and also uh, rules for data quality data masking and uh, confirming to reference data as well the business should be able to specify this themselves in a way that facilitates collaboration with downstream it developers so once you discover the data and then define uh, the, the various process around it then we need to apply which includes developing and deploying those rules wherever they are needed it also includes process management for uh, remediating exceptions and managing changes and among the other things that require stakeholders to 
collaborate effectively and then uh yeah we, we have done the discovery we have defined and then we have applied the rules then ongoing measuring and monitoring how actual data is confirming to the policies scorecards that are defined dashboarding and reporting uh, and alerting are the key uh, key factors which uh, which proactively and uh, as well as after the fact auditing for uh, compliance purposes as well and finally this is this is a, a cycle right new data sources come in and you need to be reconciled with the existing data or apps gets updated etc so this needs to be a cycle and uh, you know it it needs to be handled as a process uh, step by step so so we have defined the analyst tool uh, which caters to uh, these steps in a uh, in a in, in a manner that that you go through the process okay so that is the the definition of or the use usage of or or the strategy of holistic data stewardship from the informatica standpoint okay moving on so let's talk about business glossary so uh, on this file we spoke about what are the the capabilities that uh, uh, the holistic data stewardship actually brings into the table so now let's take a look at what business glossary addresses what are the problems areas that business glossary addresses business glossary enables data stewards to uh, build and manage a common business vocabulary across the enterprise and make it available uh, so that many users can consume it the vocabulary furnishes clear meaning and business context and can be linked to underlying technical metadata to provide a direct association between business terms and objects business glossary addresses lot of questions like how is the business term defined who is the owner for the business term who is what is the origin of data that is related to the business term and how are the the numbers associated with the business terms are calculated in uh, using uh, the various relationship etc so with the business glossary features you can establish clear and error free communication across the enterprise resulting in fewer iterations and faster project delivery and it enhances collaborations between uh, it and uh, business with a common business vocabulary and built in collaboration tools that are available in the in the glossary and it it should provide a solid foundation for uh, the regulatory compliance data governance and data stewardship initiatives across the enterprise so that is that is what the the problem areas that are addressed by business glossary and who are the users of business glossary uh, there are stakeholders who review the impact of the change that that uh, based on the business changes and assess the impact and review the and approve the business term changes when the stewards actually put in the content and stewards are the one who define the business terms based on the business requirements and publishes them to the uh, to the consumption of uh, people at large and then the reference users who are, who make up more than 90% of uh, the the glossary users who just look up for business terms for example you are going through a business report and you didn't understand a specific concept uh and you would like to understand for what this concept really means right. you use the business glossary to understand the meaning of those concepts yeah. then i will keep people who are not speaking can you please go on mute that's we'll get that started okay please correct that sure thank you okay so now uh, let's look at the at the stewardship life cycle how the stewardship life cycle uh, actually uh, you know is performed this picture demonstrates how a change in the business like a regulatory change is handled in the in the enterprise stakeholders access the impact uh, assess the impact of the change and inform the stewards about the same stewards make the required changes in the business terms which are affected by the business change and uh, and propose the change for review stakeholders then approve the change and uh, uh, review the change and approve or reject the changes based on the information that is put in once approved 
the changes are published and the reference users can see the changes in business terms. In this whole process, IT facilitates the necessary infrastructure for hosting the, the business glossary and managing it. So there is a close coordination between the business and IT uh, while uh, defining and managing uh, the business change with respect to business glossary. Okay. So how was the Informatica business glossary uh, prior to 9.6 release that uh, came up earlier this year? Right. Business glossary was part of metadata manager. Uh, business glossary desktop was introduced from in 9.51 for hotkey enabled lookup. And uh, you know, but but the feedback from the customers was business were, audience were not finding it intuitive. No workflow and notification support was uh, existent in the in the tool. No business policy support for governance use cases. Uh, there was no tighter integration with uh, other DI and DQ solutions. And permissions and privileges were a problem for individual glossaries, right? So these are some of the feedback that we got from various customers on on the the glossary that that we had along with metadata manager in prior to nine six. So then uh, in in nine six we separated uh, metadata manager and business glossary. So what were the reasons behind the the split, right? So many many people have this. Uh, uh, you know, question on why did we separate metadata manager and business glossary in 96? So one of the main, uh, uh, you know, uh, the, the drivers was target persona. Mostly the glossary users oh were uh, business users, whereas technical metadata users are technical users. And business glossary caters to business users, whereas MM is catering uh, or targeted towards the IT audience within the enterprise. So we decided to move. Uh, BG from uh, you know the, along with metadata manager to analyst tool, which is targeted towards the business audience uh, that that are the main predominant users of glossary. And the other ma major driver for us to uh, separate MM and BG in 96 was to integrate um, business glossary with other Informatica tools. Uh, especially consumption of glossary definitions from various tools like profiling, rule builder, etc., were are the major drivers. However, uh, in 9.6 and above, we still have a read-only copy of glossary available for MM uh, MM users, uh, and and they have an option to go to the analyst by clicking on a, a particular button. Okay. So coming to Informatica Business Glossary, uh, you know, overview, right? So it provides a common vocabulary of business terms within the enterprise, just like any other uh, business glossary solution. It, it has easy to use interface uh, where you can create, revise, and search glossary assets uh, without uh, with the support of uh, approval workflow, basic work approval workflow that's available. And then manage relationship with uh, other assets using the type relationship concept that we have built in, and with this BG desktop, which is glossary desktop, you uh, users can easily look up for glossary assets and then uh, so find uh, the definition for it within the, the application uh, that they are using, rather than having to come to the glossary as a solution, right? So yeah, this is the business glossary desktop, which is a lightweight Windows application. Where you can perform lookup and uh, and and view the glossary definitions in the uh, in, in your desktop rather than having to go to the analyst tool to find out the definitions. So you have the option to go to analyst tool as well if you are interested. But if you're just interested in, hey, uh, I'm I want to know what this really means, you can just uh, look at this uh, definition here or the the glossary definition in the in the desktop and. Uh, and you can you can move on with your business applications, okay? Coming to nine six, what are the the major features that uh, we introduced in nine six the release of uh, business glossary? Uh, as I mentioned before, we have a brand brand new user interface for business users, uh, which is catering to the business users, and we have support for business terms, policies, and categories uh, within business glossary. Uh, we have custom attributes and layouts. Layouts can be uh, modified and uh, modified to suit your own needs. 
so that you don't have to really uh, use the the default layout that we ship with with the product. And we have type relationship, as I mentioned before, so that you can define what is the type of relationship between uh, two objects, whether it is uh, uh, you know governance relationship or either relationship or has a relationship, etc. And we also support custom relationship types so that you can know, create your own relationship types between two or uh, two glossary objects using uh, our custom relationship uh, uh, custom custom uh, you know framework. And it enables collaboration uh, so that the, the users who are using uh, the business glossary and uh, the, the stewards who are actually creating the business glossary content, they can collaborate uh, using comment option that's available. And we have uh, stakeholder management, and then we have notifications which provide the indication of the changes that are happening uh, within the glossary. And we also have per, per glossary permissions so that you can uh, provide and, and uh, govern access for the users based on the various um, you know methodology that you have put in in your enterprise. And I, as I mentioned before, we introduced a new concept called as business policies in 9.6. Uh, policy is the business purpose that governs the best uh, business practices, and the policies can be linked to business terms in what we call as the governance relationship, and it provides one place to document the policy purpose and the requirement. For example, here in the in the diagram that you can see, uh, we have a policy called as retention, which defines how the the enterprise in a in a insurance uh, company can uh, you know how long can uh, they have to retain the documents uh, that are that are related to any particular litigation etc okay and uh, and and you have a term called accident here uh, which 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 is governed by the the retention policy and you specify an intent called as hey uh, these we have to retain the the documents regarding accidents Involving loss of life for 10 years, so that uh, you know we we are compliant with the regulatory uh, authorities, and and also destroy the copies after that, so that we don't have to retain them. So you can you can define a policy which is defined at a, an organization level, and also each of the terms which are governed by that policy can define the intent through which uh, the the uh, the the term actually is governed by the uh, policy. And this is an example of how business terms and uh, business policies and terms, uh, you know, are are linked together. Uh, you have two policies here called as privacy and aging, and uh, the privacy policy defines how to protect access uh, from outside uh, or the documented use cases, and aging policy uh, keep, helps you keep the data only so long as it is relevant in the uh, in the organization. Then we have the business terms address, which is governed by both these policies. The intent of privacy policy is that uh, allowed use is for delivering statements, whereas the intent of aging policy is to retain the address for three years uh, before uh, it gets destroyed. Similarly, uh, rule intent is also defined for tax ID, a business term with the other authorized use cases. This way, business term stewards can define the specific intent of the policy for their respective terms. And business glossary is also integrated with uh, a DQ rule builder. You can document uh, and publish business requirements for rules from the glossary context. You can launch DQ rule builder to specify uh, and then you know define your own rule spec and get started with the glossary content. With the, the glossary content automatically get carried over to uh, rule builder so that you can define rule spec uh, in, in the glossary uh, in, in the rule builder with uh, the, uh, the information that is already put in in the glossary. So what's new in business glossary 961 which came uh, uh, in, the, in the middle of this year, uh, we have business initiatives to support bulk approval and publish so you can now manage uh, the the whole change in the business as uh, as one entity as as a project for example uh, let's say uh, there is a change in the regulation 
and you have uh, multiple terms which you get impacted by it and you can manage them as a pro uh, project and use bulk approval and publish uh, capability that's available in business glossary for uh, publishing of glossary assets or changes right and we also have asset taxonomy relationship diagram to pictorially depict how uh, the assets are related to each other at various levels and we have uh, some of the other uh, smaller features like ability to create uh, defined default values and also retire a synonym on a specific date that those are the, the new features that are available that are available in uh, uh, 961 okay so now I will take you through the demonstration of uh, business glossary uh, in 961 and, and also cover some of the, the new things that we have done in uh, 96 as well. Okay, so let me share my VM. Okay. Uh, can you see my screen? Can you see my uh, glossary desktop? No. Oh, there's a delay. No. no. Oh, is there a delay? Yeah. Uh, still, we are seeing the PPT. Okay. Can you see? Uh, can you see it now? No. 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 Nope. No. No. Okay. There seems to be some problem then. Still seeing the, the PPT or? Uh... Yes, still the PPT. Okay. It says what's new in business class. Now we can see. Okay. Now you can see the, okay, great. Let me see. Can you see my business glossary uh, desktop uh, thingy box? Yes. Okay, yes. okay great. So uh, the, the, the whole purpose of business glossary desktop is to enable business users to consume glossary uh, within the apps that they are the, that they are using, right? So, uh, let's say you 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 are actually going through a business report and you didn't understand a concept, you can uh, uh, just uh, you know type that uh, type that uh, text here in the business glossary or use some of the hotkeys that are available here and uh, hotkey preferences that uh, that that is available here and use that for your uh, you know, if you press these keys and automatically uh, select a particular text and press these keys and automatically uh, the business glossary search would actually get triggered. Uh, in this case, I'm going to uh, run this uh, search. So uh, I, I get, I search for a term called share and I got uh, various uh, uh, results here and I'm interested in issued share. I would like to know more details about issued share and uh, I got the dis description and the related terms and the owner and uh, status, etc. Right. So, which is I got I got a, a decent no, uh, you know, understanding. Don't, we don't, don't see, see the definition. Yeah, it's yeah, saying no results delay. found. Yeah, there is a huge delay in the, what you are presenting and what uh, is being discussed. Oh, okay, okay. So. I can, we can see the hot key now. I think hot key is different. Now we can see. Okay, okay. so now, now it's up. So can you back up a few sentences, please? Okay, so let me let me start. Right. So one second. Hold on. Let me see if it helps by. changing my connection to something else. Can you, can you see the, the issued share uh, results now? Yes. But how did you get there? 
Okay. So uh, yeah. So let me let me let me go back. So I search for share here. Can you see it now? No, we still see. Oh. Is there a still? Okay. There seems to be some major problem then. So I search for share. Okay, and then I got into uh, I got many results. Uh, result set and okay. Uh, wait, wait. I clicked on. Hello, hello. We're not seeing yeah. an active screen of yours. It's just like a snapshot. How did you get to this part where you ask for the definition share? I see the results, but how did you get there? How did you start? Okay, so I just uh, you know uh, search for share here. As you can see, there is a search box at the top, right? No. So. It, what what we're oh. seeing is just is the result set of the desktop. It's 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 in there. I mean, we have the desktop and we use it. it. It's it's not your screen isn't moving, so all we see is the end result. But that's where you start looking up in the top box where you typed in share, and then you just press enter and then it it comes back with the search. But we're not seeing any of that. All we're seeing is the final. Okay, so let's say I I search for something else, right? So it. Didn't find any results. Can you see that now? No. 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 We don't see your mouse move or anything. Right. Your we have a still broken. screen. Yes. I think you need to okay. select and connect. <laughs> Let's. Uh... Okay. So let me let me try that. I mean, let me uh, try disconnecting and connecting again, if it helps. Okay. So I don't know whether you guys would uh, uh, would be uh, bumped off from the from the session. If I do that, Is it uh, getting better? Is it? Uh, can you can you see my screen? I see a white box with some black boxes. Me too. Yeah, it looks like it's just refreshing. It's taking some time though. Okay. I'm really sorry for uh, the glitch. I'll stop sharing and then share it back. Let's see whether it helps. Can you can you see my screen now? No. Okay, this is really bad. It's coming up, but not fully refreshed. Before you um, stopped the web or stop sharing, um, it, just, it did just start. Like we were able to see it then, so it might just take about a minute or so for it to to completely refresh. Wow, that's a, that's a long time. Okay, so uh, I don't know how to how to do this now. So maybe I'll completely get out of the meeting room and then join back. I think that's. That seems to be the the best option, but I don't know whether it's going to bump all of you out and then we'll have to dial in again.
we can see your screen now. Okay. So let's see if it helps. I mean, let me start again. Start all over again, okay? So I search for, can you see a blank screen in the Informatica Business Glossary desktop? Yes. Okay. So I now type share. Can you see it? We see an S, and that's it. Okay. No, no, no share. 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 Can you see it now? Yes. Okay. So now I I searched. So did you see the search results? No, it, uh, it says it's it's right now. My results haven't returned. Okay, ten ten results found, and then can you see the list of uh, uh, list of uh, results yeah, now they, here? Yep, now they've returned. Okay, so now I clicked on issued share, which is what I'm interested in. Can you see uh, the the uh, issued share as a as a term which is expanded? Yes. Okay, so good. So that's that's far better than what it used to be earlier. Okay, so now I got the details about uh, the issued share, which provides a description and the terms which are related to the the issued share uh, business term, and who is the administrator, who is the owner, and and also the, the status of that uh, particular uh, term, right? So now I can click on this uh, small button here, and then go to business glossary in analyst tool, right? Uh, can you see that at at the top right? Can you see a small button that right, right. Okay. here? Okay, so and then it takes you to the business glossary at desktops. I mean business glossary in analyst tool. So I log in as a reference user uh, because I I just want to see what are the the capabilities that are available for the reference users, and uh, I I get to the the term. Right here in in the analyst tool. It is slowly coming up. Can you can you see uh, can you see the analyst tool here with uh, the the term? Term's not there yet, but it's slowly coming. Okay. Uh, yeah. How does it log in as a reference user? Um, when I click on that, I have created. So, I created a user called reference user, yeah. Right, right. But from the business glossary desktop, when you click on that icon uh, to go to uh, analyst tool, yes. Uh, how does it know to directly log in as reference user? No, I actually provided uh, the login credentials when I uh, when I get to the analyst tool. Oh, okay. Okay. So I see the the. The share issued share as a, as a business term here. It has all the details, uh, which uh, you know some of which you saw in the, the business glossary desktop. You have various sections that you can get into, like general status, people who are managing that, and the context and activity, etc. And there are seven related terms to the, the business term here that uh, that we are actually referring to, right? And we have a relationship view. What what I was mentioning before. Uh, as uh, the mm, the pictorial depiction of how this term is related to the other terms. Okay, can you see the see the diagram here? Not yet. Okay. Okay. Here we go. Yeah. Floated. <laughs> okay. So. You, we now have a, a term called as issued share, which is uh, which is linked to or connected to uh, the terms called equity listing, equity uh, instrument, uh, issue information, etc. And then uh, the the type of relationship is shown here. Contains contains is the relationship that is between issued share and equity listing, whereas issued share and uh, exchange or a share have a parent relationship. So essentially. Uh, the parent of issued share is share, right? So, uh, so we have relationships defined. Uh, we, we by default show two levels of relationship. You can click on any number of relationship that you would like to uh, see. Now, layers, levels actually mean uh, you know the, the levels 
how the the terms are connected to the other terms for example in this case we have uh, this is the first level and this is the second level right so uh, if you say 3 you will see the next level information as well okay so in order and, for uh, in order for people to see this so they have to have a login to the analyst tool is that correct yes yeah that's correct and uh, and we also have a lot of filtering options on the right hand side you can click on any specific relationship and uh, and see only that specific relationship or or the uh, or the group of relationship if you are interested in you can see that as well right you can you can understand uh, right. with this diagram you can understand how the terms are related to the other terms using one click rather than having to navigate through uh, multiple uh, multiple clicks Right. And are you able so to you know, go through here to get to the metadata itself when it comes to um, sources, uh, upstream and downstream relationships and that sort of stuff? Does that come through here or do you end up in the metadata manager window to do that? So if you're talking about the lineage relationship, uh, yeah, technical lineage will still be available in metadata manager. Uh, this is just the, the business terms and their relationships. and uh, uh, we are actually working on what we call as business view of lineage to provide uh, the the business uh, context uh, i mean lineage from a business context rather than the technical lineage that you see in uh, um, that you see in metadata manager okay did you create so so how do we get there from here to get to that, uh, that get to that technical lineage yeah, I, I wanted to see this the procedures that built this how do i get there yeah. from here yeah i I'll, i'll show that so essentially okay. when you have you have a term and then uh, there is a related uh, you know a related data asset section where you can go and and click on and navigate to metadata manager as well okay, okay. thank you Did i was you also wondering so, from the analyst or you created it in metadata manager and you are pulling it here where did you create it lineage so uh, this was uh, uh, you mean the the diagram that i showed Yes, yes. That was created in the uh, that is created in analyst tool itself. I mean, uh, essentially that that gets automatically derived from the relationship that you have put in in the in your glossary. I had a question about the same thing. Is it possible for us to uh, do business term modeling in in this current uh, tool, or is that something that we are looking at? yeah business term modeling in the sense i mean creation of uh, the business terms is that is that what you say what right you mean if, if we term? wanted to create relationships i mean right now i yeah. guess the way we are defining it is you know whether it's a parent but is there a way for us to visually also uh, create a uh, i mean basically a modeling visual modeling oh, no. uh, okay. okay so there's no way for us yeah. to pull in multiple business terms and then uh, join them visually you know yeah. like yeah okay. it is currently not available but that's one of the goals of uh, relationship diagram where you can uh, you know pictorially create uh, with the help of uh, the diagram you can create uh, new relationships okay. but that's not available today okay thanks previously you just you said that you were going to provide read only capability to the glossary in 96 from metadata manager can you describe how that the terms are going to be managed from the glossary in metadata manager that currently exists in any process reference files link files that are existing in 951 metadata manager so uh was your question related to how i can uh, how i can get the the metadata or the the, the business glossary that i defined in analyst to the metadata manager was that was that your question no all my existing custom processes that maintain my glossary in 95 Oh, you have defined some custom classes in 951, and you would like to get them to uh, 96. Is that is that your question? Yeah. So if if it's read only in Metadata Manager, and I have built-in schedules inside 951 to auto update those custom classes, how does that work with Analyst? And is Analyst going to be something that is provided part of the Power Center Enterprise license, or is this something that's licensed separately? Yeah. Uh, you you don't require any separate licenses for using business glossary in the analyst tool uh, it would be uh, the same power center advanced edition license that uh, you purchased with metadata manager 
अच्छा है ओके या लेट मी लेट मी मूव ऑन क्विकली बिकॉज आई थिंक वी आर रनिंग ऑफ टाइम एज वेल प्रॉब्लम विल रिजर्व टेन मिनट्स पोस्ट द द टाइम फॉर द क्वेश्चन राइट सो we also have the audit history here you can you can click on uh, this particular review history and then find out how uh, the the history of uh, this business term how was created what was the version uh, and uh, how how uh, you know what were the changes that went in etc right so you can you can get that information as well and we also have uh, the the search button here uh, which will which will search for all the business terms just like the way uh, you searched in the business glossary desktop uh, it searches for all the analyst objects not just the business glossary terms here right so for example if i'm searching for cs here uh, you will pretty much get the same results but um, they are not uh, they are not analyst objects alone i mean in this case it, they are just analyst objects because i haven't created any other analyst content but uh, if you had any analyst content which is related to this object you would see it here as well and then we have a lot of filtering options here on the right hand side which you can use for filtering uh, or narrowing down your search results and uh, search can can itself be uh, you know we can we can you can have a complex search query as well for for the results right and uh, we also have the library listing of uh, business glossary terms here uh, we have business terms and then uh, categories which are published in which are available in the assets tag assets uh, you know a drop down and then if you go to glossary tab here you can see how uh, the the terms are related to uh, and how the the uh, structure of the glossary here for example financial market glossary has a category called uh, common uh, and then uh, the the objects under the uh, common are actually seen here so we have a uh you know a hierarchical nature of uh, glossary that that's seen here right so if you go back to glossary now uh you will see the same uh, issued share uh, as a as a term and then uh, if you are if you are looking at say let's say a, you are a business user and you would like to provide a comment for uh, the steward saying hey mr steward uh, i really didn't understand this or Uh, i think this needs to change to a certain uh, a certain other definition so if you are not happy with the, the definition that is provided here you can actually provide a comment to the steward and the steward can actually uh, you know create a new term or revise the term with with the modified uh, changes that are suggested by you as a business user so that goes as a notifications to the steward and the steward modifies the business term uh and it goes through approval cycles like uh, he proposes it for review and then uh, uh, publishes it for other consumption so let's let's look at that right so i say i say uh, modify a business term here modify description right so and then save it so if this comment would actually reach the steward in this case i think uh, the the owner right uh, is uh, the administrator so i just uh, log out as reference user and log in as administrator here so this is uh, the the flow that we really looked at right now i mean till now was uh, the, the the reference user work flow right where uh, the the users uh, look for the business content and then uh, look at the relationship uh, uh, view to understand how the, the terms are related to each other etc okay so now i log in as, as an administrator and then i uh, you see a small uh, red icon here circle here which indicating the number of uh, uh, the notifications that are received you can click on it and then get to the get to that particular notification okay is it refresh now can you can you see the the uh, the same term no, no it's not refreshing okay. Will this be a recorded? Yes, it will be recorded. Yes, this is being recorded. Thank you. Okay, I'm I'm really sorry for the technical glitches here. Okay, so now I I just click on this uh, the small circle there, and then I see that reference user, 
uh, the the comment that is provided by reference user is seen here, right? Uh, and then you can click on issue share and then get to, get to that term, right? And um, here you can you as a you as a, a steward can actually create a revision of the term and uh, make the changes and uh, go through the approval cycles. For example, uh, propose it for review and automatically the stakeholders who are assigned for this business term uh, will get notification to uh, review the changes. Once the review is done, you can publish the term or reject the term based on the, the approval, uh, you know, approval uh, history so that uh, you, you as a steward can actually publish or reject the term and, uh, and make it available for reference users. And if you are a if you are a reference user, you can you can follow the term as well for the updates that are happening in the term, so that you you can stay updated if there is any particular update that happened to this particular uh, business term. Okay. And uh, we also have the concept of business initiatives that I mentioned before. You can add uh, the 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 draft terms to a business initiative. And manage it as a project, and uh, uh, and and you know uh, have the bulk approval and publishing of business terms in one shot using business initiatives. So business initiative itself will become a, a kind of uh, asset, and all the underlying uh, the the draft assets will be inside the the business uh, initiative. And once the business initiative gets published, all the business terms uh, which are contained in that initiative will also get published. Okay, so now let's look at uh, one uh, uh, last thing, which is basically how uh, the the business glossary and metadata manager are linked, right? So, from if I go to open, which takes me to the um, the library view, I can uh, click on it and then go to glossary and then look at uh, um, the, or I can search for. Full cost of the possible. Okay, for example, I, I'm interested in the cost ratio. I can click on it and uh, I can uh, go to the, the definition. You can see that uh, the definition of the term, and there are also some data assets that are related to it. There are five data assets that are related to it, and you can click on the 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 relationship or the uh, the data asset and get to the uh, the technical metadata that is related. So these are the technical metadata objects that are related to this business term, right? So you can click on it and then it takes you to metadata manager. You can log into metadata manager uh, using your credentials and it automatically takes you to that particular object in the whole hierarchy. Which uh, defines um, which is linked to this uh, business term. So that way, uh, you can navigate between metadata manager and business glossary uh, in in nine six and and uh, above. Okay. So uh, and and as I mentioned before, uh, all the I mean uh, the 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 glossary that that we provided in 961 96 and 961 is uh, is template driven so all the all the assets for example business terms uh, categories policies etc they have a template through which you can modify how the the look and feel of uh, business glossary uh, assets uh, that you see in your in your glossary so you can you can manage them uh, manage the look and feel of the glossary as well as uh, the glossary security can be uh, granted at um, at at a at a particular object level rather than having to give the access at uh, at a glossary level so you can you can limit access to individual terms if you are uh, if you are interested to do that way okay Okay, and and finally, uh, there are some uh, you know work focus areas for uh, business glossary, uh, business view of lineage, as I mentioned uh, mentioned earlier. Okay, and also the canonical workflow support for BG asset approvals. Today we have a very simple approval process in place for business glossary. So we are uh, we are working on a canonical uh, workflow support, 
and then also uh, rich text and attachment support as well. So these are some of the the focus areas for uh, business quality or uh, business quality uh, in in the in the upcoming releases. And some of the best practices for uh, business glossary uh, are mentioned here. Hello. Yeah. Can you hear me? Before you move on, will will I mm -hmm. be able to see the uh, the data lineage in Metadata Manager with the business analyst tool, the information that is in the business analyst tool? I know there's a relationship view in the business analyst tool which you showed us, but Correct. does that same lineage uh, translate to the metadata manager tool where I can see if there's any tables involved and where this information is coming from, or are they going to remain two separate tools? Yeah, so currently uh, the technical metadata lineage that you see in the metadata manager would remain in metadata manager, but as I mentioned uh, in the uh, in the major focus areas for business glossary, we are working on what we call as business view of lineage, uh, which provides conceptual view of lineage mm -hmm. using term and asset linkages the term has with various technical mm -hmm. metadata objects. So uh, we provide, we plan to provide uh, lineage at a um, at a business context level within business glossary. So, but but for the actual technical lineage, you still have to go to a metadata manager. And but why not just just bring them together eventually, right? I mean, you 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 separate them, which I get, but but I think long term it makes sense to just. I mean, the whole thing needs updating. I mean, it's really good, but and it's been around a long time, right? But so. Any plans on okay. that? So, uh, one of the reasons why we uh, want to, uh, you know, keep it separate or or have have a distinction between these two, even though they they can get then there will be an option to navigate between these two is the users who use a business glossary, uh, they they may not be really interested in in the technical lineage information for uh, that particular object in question, right? So they. They may be interested in okay, hey, how this term is related to the other terms, and also, hey, what is the the technical metadata object that is related to this uh, this uh, you know business term, and how uh, how I can actually derive lineage using that information. So, what we plan to provide with business view of lineage is just that, so that you know the the, the business users who are not really interested in the power center transformations. And uh, and also the the database joins etc. They they don't have to go to uh, the the technical metadata manager solution to get to the lineage. They can they can find it within the business glossary itself. Mm -hmm. So does that make sense? Yeah, but I I don't agree with all that. I, you haven't met all of our users. The healthcare maybe it's just healthcare. I don't know, but a lot of them are are used to that. I think what was what was lacking very quickly is just this working on the on the UI overall. Which I see you guys have done that, and I appreciate that. I just um, you know metadata manager you know could could use some assistance in in, in the UI and making it easier and. Separating, you know, long term, I just don't think makes a lot of sense, and I'm hoping you guys will reconsider that and and figure out a better way to package that, maybe in ten or something. Um, I I had one last question. If you could just uh, address any plans to have the glossary, either the desktop or in the analyst, uh, be filterable by the actual glossary. So when I go and search on a term, what if I have five or ten thousand terms? You know, what if I want to have the users be able to filter on the glossary to search in like they can in Metadata Manager, you know, in that search area. You can browse and filter down to just search within a particular glossary. There's no functionality to speak of right now in, in the desktop or in your analyst, and, and that's frustrating, and it's going to prevent our rollout of that uh, widespread for us. So, mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. okay. So, uh the question the question seems to be around uh, how uh, you know the business glossary desktop searches for, for the whole uh, whole you know list of glossaries that are available rather than uh, search it based on a particular uh, a particular glossary right? right so that that's a question right yeah right. one of the ways you could you could achieve that today is yeah that's not available today but one of the ways you could achieve that today is uh, uh, through 
or the the accesses for particular users for particular glossaries do you think that is that that's going to help with with you no no because we want everybody to have access to all glossaries but if they they feel strongly or they only want to see the result within a particular thing um or that context you know in a particular glossary we want them to be able to filter that down and if we don't have that functionality then we're going to end up having to write that a different way on our own in house which is not great so mm -hmm. just keep that in mind <laughs> sure sure Sure. Yeah. Yeah. That that's a good input. Thank you. Thanks. Okay. So uh, yeah, there has been some requests to show best practices this uh, slide. So uh, few of the best practices for uh, the business glossaries. We recommend you to define logical steward group so that uh, not the, not an individual. Uh, it can be easily handled, and uh, and also some of the other best practices are. Uh, for building a glossary grounds up uh, you can do the following steps uh, you can create an empty glossary and then define all your custom attributes which is optional anyway and uh, export the glossary to excel uh, build the glossary in excel and import it back uh, and use business initiatives to get the changes approved in one shot right so for bulk editing uh, you can do it uh, in excel excel as a mechanism for uh, you can export the business glossary uh, information into an excel then make the changes there and then put them back into the business glossary so uh, so that is uh, that's some of the best practices around uh, business glossary in 961 and these are some of the references uh, documents and the videos that we have posted on youtube uh, for you to uh, look at and and get the information about uh, how to use business glossary and what are the what are the the best uh, best ways to use it okay so that's pretty much i had i'm really sorry for all the the technical glitches and uh, and and uh, we will take any questions i'm i'm available for another 5 to 10 minutes i mean if you guys think uh, there are any questions uh, uh, we can take it up and there may be some on the chat as well can you go back one slide please yeah Thank you. Email. Are there any questions uh, from the from the people? Yes, I actually had the... one question about um, we upgraded to nine nine, and um, I didn't see in the analyst tool. I can't find a place where in 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 metadata manager in nine five one. There was a place to have mm -hmm. links like URLs, you know, um, you know, some hyperlinks. Um, I don't see that in nine six one. That links, it, you know, it, is that something that's going to be in the future so we can have a hyperlink somewhere or be able to have those URLs to reference files or documentation from somewhere else? Yes, I, yeah. actually, I opened a case on this yesterday. <laughs> yeah. So currently it is not available. Yeah, you're right. Uh, the 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 links links in the sense hyperlinks to the the uh, objects is avail is not available today. But that's in plan for Teno and it will be available. Yeah. Is that going to be available in a hotfix since the bug? So uh, it requires some of the platform changes and the, and the backend changes. That's the reason why we are actually pushed it out to uh, Teno. uh we will see if it can be incorporated in in an hotfix uh, in uh, in the in the future but uh, uh that since that requires some of the the platform changes in the the analyst tool uh, that's the reason why we have pushed it to teno okay that's a show stopper for us on my side um since we were we relied on it heavily in 951 and now in 961 we don't have a a clickable hyperlink so just so you know yeah Can you go yeah, we're we're in that same boat. <laughs> Sorry. Can you go back one more slide? Go back past it. Okay. Yeah. Can you allow there any other questions? Should we Are be able to still available on the metadata manager side? Uh, you mean uh, the, the, the link, business glossary? The is, well, right. If they didn't carry over to the business glossary, that's an analyst in 9.6. Uh, 
are the links still available in the business glossary side on Metadata Manager? Yes, you can uh, create links within the Metadata Manager. Uh, um, I mean, it, it will continue to work the way it worked in 951 years. So all the terms that you're going to have in the business glossary that's on the analyst side, all of those terms, regardless of their status and phase, will still appear on the Metadata Manager side? Yes. And does that include all of the fields? Because currently it only transfers name, category, and description. Oh, not all the, not all the, uh, all the, uh, you know, fields, and also all relationships. But whatever you saw in 951 uh, with uh, with business plus three 951 would be continue to be available. Well, in, but not in, all the the type relationships. Yeah, in 961, um, and in the documentation, mm -hmm. only published terms and categories yeah. are showing in Metadata Manager. That's what it's saying in the reference guide. So we only see, so like draft terms are not available in 951 in Metadata Manager if they're in draft and analyst because the terms are now being created in analyst. They're not available um, for viewing unless they're published was my understanding from the documentation. Yes. Yeah, that's right. I mean, I stand corrected there. So uh, it's, it's only the published assets which would be available uh, for Metadata Manager. Uh, the reason being is that uh, the published assets are the ones which are uh, available for consumption and also uh, for for uh, consumption for the reference users uh, and also for uh, linking uh, business terms with uh, technical metadata objects. Yeah, currently it is limited to the published assets uh, and uh, uh, and and you know we are, we are also adding some of the uh, published assets under unpublished categories as a, in in hard fix one hard fix two, but currently it is just uh, published assets. Are so in future hot fixes, that? other statuses will be available in Metadata Manager. Is that what I just heard? Uh, no, uh, what I mentioned was uh, uh, it, the. the there, there is this published categories and category. I mean, the 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 terms are under categories, right? So, if uh, currently if the if there is a published term within an unpublished category, uh, even they are not getting listed in uh, in in metadata manager, uh, but we will list them as a part of uh, HF2 hard 62. Uh, but currently, there are no plans to bring the draft assets uh, into metadata manager because. Uh, mm, so the, only the published assets would be uh, would be available for consumption within Metadata Manager, and all the the creation and the maintenance of um, business glossary would be done within Analyst Tool. Okay, so I just you. want to make sure I understand that correctly. So if you have a term that's in a draft or an under review phase, you cannot run lineage on it. You can only run lineage on a published term. Yes. Yeah, that's correct. Okay. Any other okay. questions? Are there any yes. user groups associated with the glossary? Yes. Or just the support forms? Uh, yeah, just the support forms. I, I, I don't think there is, I mean, at, at least I'm not aware of any user group that's. Uh, with this process. So if you guys think a user group on uh, on, on uh, my support would actually help, we can create one. Yes. Yeah. Yeah, I think it'd be good okay. for us to yes. exchange ideas and to to help you uh, prioritize future features. Yes. Yeah. Okay. Great. Yeah. So I'll I'll consider that. Yeah. So I have a question on if you can only run lineage on published terms. Part of our approval process is to validate that the lineage is correct. How would we, do you have any best practices or how we can work around that? Okay, okay. Can you repeat that for me? I, I find it hard to hear that part, yeah. In order to approve and publish a term, our mm -hmm. stewards are required to validate that the lineage is correct. But if you can't see the lineage until it's been published, how are they supposed to validate that? Yeah, that's that's a good question. So that that's a question I have heard from one of the other customers as well. Uh, so we are looking at a way in which uh, 
uh, how we can you know when when the the technical lineage uh, or the technical term that is a technical metadata object as related to business term when that uh, in, when that association is done we would like uh, the the steward of the term to be notified so that uh, you know he or she can actually take some actions to see whether that is really the 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 uh, technical metadata object that is related to business term and and trigger some approval workflow but that's that's in the future yeah does that does that help mm, not really <laughs> <laughs> okay. Okay. So what, in the what I mentioned doesn't was doesn't help because we have it today, and we're in the process of upgrading to nine six one. Okay. So you're telling me that I'm losing a feature that I have today, and that I have to wait for the future to get back. So what you're saying is, uh, I uh, created a business term, and then I linked it to a technical metadata object, uh, mm -hmm. which I mean, which is usually done by uh, I mean, the, the creation of technical uh, creation of uh, business term is done by a steward who is mm -hmm. who is part of the business, and uh, he he or she talks to uh, talks to the te technical metadata user and say, hey, can you link this term to uh, five uh, you know uh, objects or, or, or to the all the objects that are that are uh, that are supposed to be linked, and once that linking is Done. Uh, you would like to see it. Uh, your steward would like to approve that. Is that what you mean? Well, our steward wants to be able to see it prior to actually publishing the term for all viewers. We want to ensure it's correct before it goes out to the full public. Yeah, that's that's interesting. So, uh, and we so can do that you, in today's would, environment. Yeah. In five. Well, you, yeah, and I'll add when you use rule-based links. You know, you can do that on on uh, 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 draft terms or under review terms, and you, and you can use rule based linking for custom linking, and then have somebody review that and say, oh, okay, in bulk, these 20 or 50 terms link over these, you know, 50 or 100 technical objects. That has to be reviewed. So yeah, taking that away is also going to be a problem for us too. Okay. Uh, I hear you guys. I hear uh, you guys. But uh, today, the way it works is okay. So business user uh, creates the content and then uh, publishes it, and the technical user uh, link it to the technical metadata. So that is that is the understanding that we have. So uh, I I, I uh, in in this uh, in this call I, I seem to hear otherwise where uh, the business user creates the content and then the technical user. Uh, you know, link the technical metadata objects to the the terms, and then it goes through the approval cycles. Is that is that what you mean? Yes. That's how we do it today. Yes. So we yeah. ensure that the lineage is correct prior to publication. Yeah. Because otherwise, we would have to, after it's been published, reject it, and then. Uh, create a revision. Is that correct? Yes, you will have to create a revision of it. Yeah. Okay. One more qu question of clarification. Uh, when we mm -hmm. have a, I mean, a parent-child hierarchy in the Informatica analyst, and we mm -hmm. have linked that uh, column to the, you know, in metadata manager. We can only see mm -hmm. the glossary. We cannot see that hierarchy in the metadata manager. Uh, did you understand hierarchy that? in the sense. Hierarchy in the sense. Uh, you mean to say glossary, category, and terms? Is that what you mean? Yes, yes. We have it in the uh, uh, you know analyst, and when yes. when lineage from the metadata manager from the table column to this glossary, we cannot see that hierarchy in the metadata manager. But that uh, that is available under the glossary tab, right? So if you go to the glossary tab, you will you will see the uh, you will see the uh, actual hierarchy of business terms. Which glossary? Under the various. Three or in metadata. In, in metadata manager. In metadata manager. I can see that. I don't know what it is. So we 
try to lean it with uh, one glass rate um, uh, from the metadata manager. Mm -hmm. Yeah, it is not available in the uh, in in that particular object itself. But uh, but when you get to that particular, uh, I mean, the, in the technical object uh, description or the the page, you won't see the the uh, the hierarchy. But uh, if you get to the term in the, in under the glossary tab of uh, metadata manager, you will see how that uh, term is within uh, within the hierarchy. Oh, okay, we have to, uh, I mean, pull that, uh, import that glossary into the metadata manager and uh, lean it to the column? Yes, yeah. So here, uh, in fact, uh, I'm showing it right away, right? So you can click on this and then you can, uh, can you see this here? Yes. Yeah, the, the, this, is, this is what I mean. Okay. Okay. Thanks a lot. Uh, I hope uh, you know it, it. It provided you an overview of uh, business class three nine six one. I'm really sorry for the the, the technical glitches. Um, yeah. Thanks. Thanks a lot for attending the session. And uh, we will try to answer the questions on chat uh, through through email or some means. Um, and uh, and uh, if if you have any questions, feel free to reach out to our support, and they can uh, reach out to me uh, using our regular channels. Uh, okay. You'll provide this PowerPoint to each of us. Uh, that that would be available as a part of uh, the recording would be available for you guys to to look at it. So I'll have to check with uh, my. Uh, Support folks to figure out how they find a way to uh, send the uh, slides. Okay. Okay. Yes, thank you. Okay. Thanks thank a you. lot. Thank you. Thanks for attending. Thank you.